WrestleMania 36 was a very fun pay-per-view for me, uh, specifically. It might get a lot of mixed reactions. I would say that uh, the best match on the entire show, in my opinion, was The Undertaker versus AJ Styles, a match that I was genuinely concerned with considering Undertaker's age and Styles also getting older as well. I just ate something and I keep freaking belching, so just uh, be wary of that. Anyways, I'm not going to go through every single match one by one by one by one because there were 16 freaking matches, okay? And there were a lot of matches that were kind of like thrown together and you kind of knew who was going to win, basically. And then there were the big matches that most people were, you know, watching the pay-per-view for. Um, the first one I want to talk about, the women's tag match, I mean, I can't really say much. Um, I do know that... They should probably work on that tag division a lot more about it. I think that's a genuine, genuine, uh, general consensus. Everyone agrees with that statement, I, I assume, that they should kind of focus on that division a bit more. It was a good, it was a solid match. It was a good match. Um, there were like some weird camera cuts, so I can't tell if they like reshot something or what was going on, but it was still a good match uh, regardless. Um, I would love to see Kyrie Singh with a singles run. The issue with that is what are they going to do with her not being able to speak English as clearly because they don't seem to favor those who uh, struggle to speak English very cl clearly despite how good they may be uh, as wrestlers. I, I would like that, but for now, I guess maybe Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross at the winning of the tag belts will probably end up going after, not going after, but being pursued by the returning Iconics, perhaps? Fire and Desire just broke up and I don't know any other tag teams aside from the Kabuki Warriors that could go after them. Um, but regardless, maybe they'll continue with the Kabuki Warriors. It doesn't really matter. We did have this, uh, a really cool match where it was the SmackDown Tag Team Championships on the line, but they did, um, single individuals. They didn't do John Morrison versus, you know, the other two teams, New Day and the Usos. Instead, they took an individual from both teams, Jimmy, Kofi, John Morrison, triple threat ladder match. It was cool. It was a really good match. And to that point, to that, to when it happened, it was the best match so far. It was really good, um, up until Undertaker versus AJ Styles, in my opinion. But anyways, it was cool. John Morrison did like this really cool corkscrew off the um, the LED post onto a ladder popped up on the ropes. It's hard to describe. If you haven't seen it, it's just it was a cool spot. There was like a monkey flip sequence that was cool. Kofi with the springboard hurricane Rana off the ladder onto John Morrison. That was pretty sick. Jay Uso took a bump to the floor, but somehow got up immediately. So probably was a mattress out there since they didn't show him falling, like all the way down. Like I'm, I'm just like, come on, man, take the bump, like Edge and Christian, like freaking, you know, die for this. Come on, no, I'm kidding. Anyways, good match. Uh, really innovative uh, ending in my opinion, with John Morrison getting hit with the. Uh, everyone was holding title belts, right? John Morrison gets hit with the title belts by. Uh, Jimmy and Kofi and he falls down onto a bridge ladder while also grabbing the belts He didn't hang on to him, but he did grab him. So ended up winning He was the last one to hold him before he you know fell off the ladder. So he was the one who pulled him down ultimately The Intercontinental Championship match with Sami Zayn and Daniel Bryan was a match I was looking really forward to and it just didn't really hit right in my opinion like It did what they wanted it to do for sure um the issue that I had is that it's Sami Zayn and Daniel Bryan, and it's like the workhorse title. I, was, I know Daniel, I know, I know Sami's a heel. I know, I know he can't be a great, amazing El Generico, you know, that we, we all miss, that are familiar with that. Nope, not going to get that. Um, but Daniel Bryan slapping him around and trying to beat the crap out of him was kind of cool. I actually um, enjoyed that. Um, but in the end... Sami Zayn caught Daniel Bryan out of the air with a big boot to the face after some interference from the Artist Collective, which I'm I'm fine with that name, by the way. I'm fine with that. Don't know what, where they're going to go now with this. I guess Drew Gulak will get a shot next, maybe. Maybe Daniel Bryan will continue to go after Sami Zayn, which is fine by me if that's the case. I just hope, I just hope it leads to Sami Zayn at some point wrestling to the to the best of his ability that he can right now because i don't want Sami Zayn's day to be run to end with him just being a slimy conniving you know heel or whatever i i don't know that's okay though he's doing a good job and I'm, i wanted him to retain i predicted he would retain he did 
I got most of the predictions right. I think actually I got all of the predictions right, um, except for Undertaker versus AJ Styles. That was the only one I got wrong. But everything else I got right. <clears throat> what was the uh, what was another match that I could talk about? I don't really want to talk about the Raw tag titles. I didn't really care too much for that match. It was, I mean, cool. Bianca Belair is in the main roster now, but or maybe not the main roster right now. But she definitely showed up to help out Angela Dawkins and uh, and Montez Ford because Selena put her hands on her husband. So it's a cool way to introduce her to Monday Night Raw. Is she gonna stay on Raw? I don't know. Or was that just a cool little moment? She might end up staying on Raw. I wouldn't mind her, though, going after Charlotte for the championship after Rhea Ripley possibly loses again. Speaking of that match, we could talk about that. Charlotte beats Rhea Ripley. Man, I, I, I thought she was going to. I was just like, I wanted Rhea to win. It would have been a nice moment for her. But it's Charlotte. And Charlotte just beats people, man. That's just how it is. You go against Charlotte, you're probably going to lose. Asuka, Becky. You know, this is how it is, man. This is how it's going to be. If your name ain't Charlotte, you're probably going to lose to Charlotte. Just saying. It was a solid match, though. I mean, even Ronda Rousey couldn't get a clean win over Charlotte. Like, come on now. She. I know they were making it a triple threat at WrestleMania, but still, even Ronda couldn't do it when she was undefeated. So, Charlotte wins. It was a solid match. I think if they had a crowd there, it would have been better. There were a lot of matches where, you know, the crowd just felt kind of kind of dead. Like, they just weren't reacting. There were a lot of matches like that. No, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, they, if they had a crowd there, that probably would have helped it a lot more. Another match that would have helped a lot more would be Edge versus Orton. I really like that match as well. Edge and Orton fighting each other was really cool to see. You know, seeing Edge in a full-on one-on-one match again, it was cool. But it was a last minute standing match. And it was kind of, it was a really long match. It might have been 32 minutes. It was a long match, all right? It was pretty long. It was good, though. It was long. Uh, they beat the crap out of each other, which I enjoyed. Um, the whole, whole issue that I think I had was the commentary. Like, they were trying to sell the idea that this is supposed to be a grudge match. It's supposed to be these two beating the brakes off each other beating each other like they stole something right they're trying to annihilate each other humiliate decimate you know what i mean like trying to just kill each other but with them not really caring too much about it sounded like they were just worried and concerned and scared the whole time i know it's supposed to be like kind of disturbing i just feel like they could have gave it a bit more energy you know since there's no crowd there i think having a bit more energy would have would have helped it i guess but i watched it in a, in a watch party so it wasn't too big a deal. It was still, it was still cool. What else can we uh, can we talk about? Um, there's there's other matches. I'm trying to skip two specific matches. I'm trying to focus on the other ones that happened. Becky versus Shayna. I thought Becky was going to win simply because it didn't seem like they have a lot of faith in Shayna just yet. And if you're gonna if you're gonna have her beat Becky for the title, Becky's gonna lose championship after holding it for over a year now. Um, you're probably gonna have to I think it actually is has been at least a year has been at this point anyways you're probably gonna have to have a crowd there just for that shock factor of her passing out and losing but then again the main event with Drew and Brock didn't really do that I just think specifically with Becky because it's a longer story for her right so the culmination would have to happen where the crowds right hot for Becky and then Shannon gets all that heat from beating her you can't really get any heat if no one's watching. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you can get it online, but sometimes online it seems like hard hard to separate for WWE, at least hard to separate criticism from uh, just people being upset. You know what I mean? Or heat, it seems like. I could be wrong on that, but there's been a lot of cases with that. One that specifically stands out to me would be Brock Lesnar when he won Money in the Bank and he was dancing around or whatever. They couldn't, they, they took it as, oh, we got to take the thing from Brock Lesnar, got to strip him of the Money in the Bank because he, uh, He's danced with, he's making a joke of the business, but people were upset because Brock won and it was just like heat. It wasn't like take, actually take the briefcase from him. <laughs> like it's just, that's just kind of dumb. Anyways, what else did we have that was, uh, that was on the card? I think of the important matches, I mean, they had two pre-show matches that were kind of cool. Cesaro versus Gulak, that was cool. Cesaro wins with a cool airplane spin without using his, his arms. I 
I'm almost certain he had him on his shoulders and spun him around in like a really innovative fashion. Liv Morgan looking good, beating uh, Natalia. So I guess Liv Morgan's going to continue to build up herself and perhaps pursue the uh, Raw Women's Championship somewhere down the line. But I don't think Shayna's done with Becky just yet. I like the shocking win for Becky, but I think we can move on to. I think finally we can talk about. Um, oh, Braun Strowman versus Goldberg. I forgot about that match. It was really quick. I thought I thought Goldberg was going to lose to whoever they picked, but when I found out it was Braun Strowman, I was like, I mean, I'm gonna pick him, but the only reason that I was worried is because it's Goldberg, right? He beat the Fiend, so it's like Goldberg is gonna lose to uh, Braun Strowman out of nowhere. I don't know, but I I could see it happening because, I mean, Goldberg's kind of old right now we got this whole pandemic going on he can't be there for every show you know what i mean he's got to worry about his his health take like a young guy who might be able to be you know be more safe uh to say the least based off of what we know so braun wins with four power slams after taking four spears from goldberg he was selling those spears he was like he was getting drilled but i knew goldberg can get him up for that jackhammer i just I, in my head i was like there's no way he's getting up the jackhammer maybe he could have but he didn't he got caught with power slam he lost Big moment for Braun Strowman. Him versus Roman Reigns would be cool, but I don't know what they're gonna do with Strowman now that he's the champion. Like, what is he gonna do? I, I don't know. I mean, it's cool that he's a champion now. It gives him something to do. I was wondering what he was gonna do at WrestleMania. He had to do something. It's just like, what does he do holding the WWE Championship? Who does he face? Does he just face Roman now? What's gonna happen? Drew McIntyre beats Brock Lesnar in a short match. It should have been short, but it shouldn't have been the main event of night two. Um, I guess it works out because it was more of a work rate match. Um, so I guess it kind of works out. We had we had these two go back and forth with their finishers. Drew kicking out at one off the uh, F5 and Brock kicking out at two off the Claymore, putting the Claymore over, nice. First person to kick out the Claymore, of course, is Brock Lesnar. But in the end, Drew beats him with a few more Claymores. I believe three consecutive Claymores, and he takes out Brock Lesnar after being hit with German suplexes and F5s. I don't think Brock Lesnar did any other moves aside from that. I don't think Drew did any other moves aside from the Claymore. I might be wrong, but that's what I remember. It could have They could have done more with this, but that's okay. I mean, Drew's going to win. And I, to me, it was a foregone conclusion. Brock could win because he's kind of like Charlotte. Like, you just never know. But I figured... Drew had to win this one, right? He had to. Would have been nice too if it was a WrestleMania in front of like, um, in like London, England. That would have been sick, dude. I really think they should have postponed WrestleMania overall, but we'll talk about that at the uh, at the end. It's the Fiend versus John Cena. It was a really good narrative, but not enough action. But it was still solid. I still enjoyed it. I just feel like there should have been more wrestling, especially inside the Firefly Funhouse. That would have been really cool to see them fight inside of there like he fights regular Bray Wyatt and then Bray Wyatt like they get to the arena he's trying to get him back to the ring because he wants to get out of the fun house or whatever because he's like being I don't know hunted by his past self and all that John Cena but instead it was really cinematic I enjoyed um all the dialogue I enjoyed I it made me laugh when uh they had uh Bo Mick Bossman go uh that's really good shit like that that got me. That's such good shit. That was, that got me pretty good. Um, but it was a cool match. I enjoyed seeing John Cena and Bray Wyatt do their thing. I just feel like they should have done some a bit more wrestling. But it was a different match on the card, and I'm satisfied with it being different. And it would have been a really cool way to end the show. I think that of night two, that was probably the most interesting of all the matches that happened. Like there was the the factor of is Charlotte gonna beat Rhea? Is uh, Brock going to actually end up beating Drew? But it was, um, he didn't really need, you know what I mean? Didn't need any of those to be the main event because he had um, Undertaker versus AJ Styles the previous night. So it was like, with that being so good, you would think you'd want to put this one on last two since you're not going to put the Universal Championship in the main event of night one and do the same thing with the WWE Championship on night two, I think. But it is the WWE Championship. And you don't want your big title to be over overshadowed. You know what I mean? So I 
I guess that makes sense, especially when it being historic, ha having WrestleMania happen on two nights for the first time. So I guess I can understand that. Now we can talk about the one I want to talk about. Biker Taker versus Alan Jones in the jeans. This was so good. Uh, Undertaker pulls up on a motorbike. AJ Styles comes out of a casket. The dialogue between the two was cool. Undertaker calling him boy. It was just great. My AJ Styles, he goes, AJ Styles, Undertaker, Asuka, Kairi Sane. My top four all-time favorite wrestlers. And it's just so cool. It's not even like on the fly either. All these I've watched for a long time before. Like I didn't know um, Kyrie Sane and Kyrie's Hojo were the same person because I hadn't seen Kyrie Sane in like forever. But Asuka, I could still find her matches on YouTube and stuff. I couldn't find a lot of Kyrie's Hojo matches at the time. So I kind of forgot who she was until she showed up in uh, the Mae Young Classic. I was like, oh shit, there she is. But anyways, those are my... Uh, those are my top four. I don't know why I feel like I had to justify that. It was really cool to see AJ Styles and take a face off. I feel like if we didn't have, if we didn't have it happen here on this uh, on this night, on our last night, then I don't think it would have happened the way it did at all. I hope it would have, but there's no point in looking at that now, or trying to worry about what it could have been. Just worry about what it is, and it was awesome. I thoroughly enjoyed that that was so much so much fun to watch undertaker freaking summoning fire just because he mentioned his wife aj styles hitting undertaker with the actual tombstone they tried to bury undertaker undertaker teleports the druids and uh gals and uh anderson working together like against undertaker it was just so cool so it was essentially a buried alive match without it being called a buried alive match i just that was awesome dude that was awesome um, but in the end, in the end, Undertaker is like, oh, I'm not going to bear you. Oh, no, we cool, man. No, no one's ever giving me a fight like that. Come on, let's go, man. And then he kicks him into the grave anyway. Uh, yeah, I liked a lot of the matches. Like, watching it, I was entertained. But it wasn't as good as I thought it could have been. I feel like it needed to have a crowd there. Next year's WrestleMania. I think they should do this same thing. Eight matches, two nights, and if they actually have a crowd there, that would be incredible for me. I think that would be a really good WrestleMania if they had that that energy to feed off of. I watched it with the watch party, and so I feel like if I didn't watch any of this with the watch party, I think I would have liked the tag match, the women's tag match. I would have liked the ladder match. I still would have liked Undertaker versus AJ Styles. Um, I don't know if I would have liked J John Cena versus Bray Wyatt as much anymore. Um, I would have liked Charlotte versus Rhea. I think that's about it. Oh, the, oh, I forgot. I forgot. No, no, I forgot. Uh, the Fatal Five Way. It ended up being Bailey and uh, Lacey as the final two. So they're saving Sasha and Bailey still. I thought this would have been the time to do it, but they still saved it. But it was still good. Um, it was a solid match. It wasn't that great, but it was it was solid. Um, if there's any matches that I didn't talk about that you want me to talk about, I can. The 24/7 title stuff was cool. Seeing Gronk win it was cool. Um, it was just I don't know. It was something different. But I mostly I just care about Undertaker versus AJ Styles. That's what I cared about. I want to see Asuka and Kyrie Sane. Uh, do something else. I, I like having them as a duo. I don't really want one of them to turn on the other, but if that happens, I think it should be Asuka turning on Kyrie, And Kyrie um, goes after maybe the SmackDown Women's Championship, and Asuka goes for Becky's Raw Women's Championship for them to... Uh, maybe they have another match again, or maybe Asuka waits it out, and whoever takes it from uh, Becky, Asuka goes after them as a heel. Like, we haven't seen heel Asuka as a champion yet, and we haven't seen Babyface Kyrie as a champion yet, and that's what I want. That's what I want. That's not what I think is going to happen. Um, AJ Styles pulled his hand out of the out of the grave or whatever, or pushed his hand out of the grave. So what he's going to do next, I don't really know. Now that he's lost, maybe to give him some time. I don't even know what they're going to do for the next few episodes, honestly. I think it would be a good time to have a little break here from, 
from from uh, now on it up until the quarantine is over they're not gonna do that but that's just what I think they should do again I'm not like a medical expert by any means so I could be completely wrong on what I'm saying right now regardless let me know what you thought in the comments below if there's anything specifically you want me to elaborate on and talk about let me know in the comments of course any questions that you may have for me I'm going to put those in the Q&A video that I've been wanting to do so yeah if you made it in the video which I'd be surprised if anyone did. Thanks for watching.